Hello and welcome to Felix Space Time. In today's video we have an interview with John Krause, a space photographer. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Um, so you applied for an Inspiration4 seat. Um, can you tell people a little mm -hmm. bit about yourself? Yeah, so my name is John Krause and I'm a space flight photographer based near Cape Canaveral, Florida. And for the last six years or so, I've been photographing pretty much every launch here from the Cape as well as a few others worldwide, like at other spaceports. Um, one in French Guiana, a few up in Alaska, a few in California, and then a few in um, Wallops in Virginia. So I work as both a, a member of the media and also um, here and there, I work directly with some of the launch companies, basically just creating imagery of rocket launches. So once this Inspiration4 bid came up, I thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to like I say in my video, take my photography to new heights. Um, so I just think it's a really exciting opportunity. Um, yeah, it seemed like a, a no brainer to apply for it. Um, from, from your application video, you, um, you said that you grew up near Cape Canaveral. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell a bit more, um, can you tell me a bit more about what it was like living up, um, growing up with rocket, launch, rocket launches basically launching from, from where you live? Yeah, um, so honestly, it's, it's one of those things where one of the analogies I make is people that grow up in colder environments where it snows, um, they don't really think about it. It's just a part of life, right? Um, and where I live in Florida, it doesn't snow. So when I go see snow, it's like a big deal. Um, for me, rocket launches, as I grew up, were just the thing that happened here. I didn't really understand the the kind of significance of them. I didn't understand that there's not many other places in the world where they happen. So, so to be honest, I kind of took them for granted. I didn't really understand how cool they were until I got into photography. So there's a funny picture I include in my video. Um, there's a picture of me with the shuttle launch in the background. And I think I'm kind of just like, like standing there, not very excited about it. Um, and, and it's kind of weird to admit, but that's how I was for a while. And like I said, until I really got into the photography and I got to see those launches up close, I didn't really appreciate them. But um, after six years of doing this now, I, I understand how cool they are and how lucky I am to live so close. Is taking photographs of rockets something that you do for a very, very long time after, if, if you're ever chosen for inspiration for? Do you think it will be something you carry on? I'd like to think that, yeah, I'd, I'd like to think that this mission sort of represents uh, the beginning of a shift where astronauts are merely people that go to space and it's not something that sort of defines you or becomes a career for most people. Um, this is the first all private civilian mission. And I think, you know, I don't know if it's gonna be five years, 10 years, 20 years, but I think there's gonna be a large, or I think a large percentage of people that go to space will not be sort of professional career astronauts. And I want that to be the case if I'm chosen where I keep taking photos of rockets, um, even after I fly and, you know, me being an astronaut is sort of just a footnote on what would be a long, exciting career of photographing, you know, rockets in the space industry. Okay. Um, apart from taking photographs, is there anything else you particularly look forward to experiencing if you go to space? Um, you know, I, I actually haven't given that too much thought because the, the angle from which I'm approaching my both my entry and sort of, you know, dreaming about the flight is primarily through the imagery that I take during the flight. Um, I think the, the prospect of both training for the mission, as well as, you know, the, the main cause of the mission is supporting St. Jude. I think both of those things will be really exciting because um, the mission's not for what, I think six, seven, eight more months. So there's a lot of time to, to learn about the training aspects and further supporting St. Jude. So yeah, those two things, apart from taking the photos, gonna be pretty cool if I were to win. If you do win the seat, you'll be the youngest person to fly in space. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. um, That's right. Do you, do you think your age will be a hindrance or an, um, an asset? Um, I don't think it'd, it'd be a hindrance or an asset in terms of like the actual utility I'd serve to the mission. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm 21, so I'm an adult, and I think I'd be able to go through that proper training, um, like 
like most other sort of average civilians, so to speak, would be. But I, I think it's an asset in the fact that, um, and I alluded to this in my entry, um, I think I'm gonna be able to inspire people worldwide. Um, a few years ago, I didn't really know where I wanted to take my life. I didn't know if I wanted to kind of maybe pursue engineering, pursue some sort of other creative field that I hadn't yet really discovered or, you know, really what I wanted to do. And then when I was a freshman in high school, which is about 14 and 15 years old, that's when I got into photography. And it took me a while to ultimately convince, convince myself that that was the path I you know, really wanted to commit to, but I think I knew pretty early on that this was different than the other hobbies that I wanted to, that I was pursuing at the time. So I think showing that a young person so early in their life can commit to a, a sort of career path and, and passion would be, would be great. Sorry, it, me illustrating that via my flight, that it's something I've done would be an inspiration to young people worldwide um, that you can pursue your passions and dreams. So yeah, that was kind of a, a long-winded answer, but um, I think my youth, to sum it up, can be an inspiration for people worldwide. Cool. Um, in, in the 60s and 70s, everyone was, was very excited about space travel. Do you think today's young people are as interested in space and space travel? Unfortunately, no. Um, I think there's just so much, so many other things people pay attention to, and I actually hope this mission can kind of reinvigorate a lot of young people into following space exploration. Um, you know, for a long time, space has felt out of reach for a lot of people, and I think with this being the first all-private civilian mission, um, it's going to make space feel a lot more attainable and relatable for the average person. So hopefully that's one part of this mission that we can, uh, you know, if I get chosen, can, can work on. Um, other than the Inspiration4 mission, what other things do you think we could do to inspire younger people to, to be interested in space and space flight? Huh. Um, I mean, I think just, just fellow, you know, content creators like me, you, um, other photographers, YouTubers, just keep making content that um, shows how cool space is. Um, I think it's one of those things that's like, it's so cool, but not enough people know about it. But when more people know about it, they'll be more interested in it just because space flight and space is so inherently cool. But I think we just got to keep sharing that message um, to get more people hooked. Okay, interesting. Um, if, if you were chosen, what would um, one thing that you'd be excited about during training? I think learning about dragon would be really cool. Um, I photographed, you know, many dragon flights, both commercial, uh, commercial crew, two of those, and then two of those were crewed, and then the in-flight abort, and then demo one, and then also dragon resupply missions for years before that. Um, so I think it'd just be cool to see that spacecraft up close after photographing it from afar. Be cool to learn about it. Um, does, does the idea of flying in a rocket scare you at all? Uh, I think there's an inherent risk that comes with any space flight. Um, SpaceX has proven that Dragon is reliable and, you know, it's NASA certified to fly crew. And I trust that, that SpaceX wouldn't have moved forward with, with signing Isaacman or Isaacman signing for this mission if they didn't have confidence in it being safe. Um, so I, I won't lie and say that I'm not scared. I'm a little bit scared of the prospect of flying, but I think that SpaceX will do all they can ahead of time to make sure it's a safe experience. Cool. Um, I, I love photography myself. Um, my mum taught me about awesome. the D um, DSLR when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me what got you into photography? Um, nothing really in particular. I was kind of just looking for other hobbies to take on. Um, and there was like a, a coworker, one of my family members that was sort of into photography and I saw that, I'm like, oh, that's cool. So I decided to just one day randomly purchase a DSLR and I started taking pictures. And about a month later, there was um, a rocket launch. It was a Falcon 9 launch actually. Um, and I just ran to the beach near my house and took some pictures and it kind of kind of like snowballed from there, so to speak, uh, just kept shooting. And here I am now. Wow. Um, is there anything in particular that you'd like to photograph while you, if you're chosen to go into space? 
Huh. Um, I, I like those, those really tight telephoto shots of Earth from above because they almost sometimes look like they're shot through a microscope with the way like clouds and mountains and water looks. It's, it's sometimes hard to get a sense of scale. So I would probably want to bring up um, the longest lens they would like safely let me pack in a dragon and shoot like telephoto abstract landscapes. Um, and then also Jared Isaacman alluded to on Twitter that the apogee will be notable, meaning that the, the furthest point of dragon in its orbit is going to be probably rather high. I don't think it's going to be a perfectly circular ISS like orbit. Um, so it'd be cool to see Earth from a, a bit of a farther perspective. So if there was a way to get the entire Earth and like the crew dragon window, that'd be pretty cool. But uh, I think we're going to hear more from Isaac Mid soon about the mission trajectory and stuff like that. So, you know, once we learn more about that and if I get chosen is when I'd, I'd really start to think about the shooting I'll do. Cool. Um, is there anywhere on Earth that you ever dream of photographing? Oh, boy. Um, so many places that I don't even know exist yet, probably. Um, I mean, I'm still young. I haven't traveled too much, so I don't really know what I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, as I age, I just can't wait to travel more. Um, let me, let me try to think of a tangible answer. Um, huh. Hawaii, Hawaii would be pretty cool. It's tropical. Um, I kind of have like tentative plans to be in Hawaii, um, in the next maybe year or two. So that'll be cool to see for sure. Um, if you, if you did, if you did get this mission and you did go up into space, would you ever go up there again? You know, I've thought about that, which which may sound a little weird because uh, I might be getting ahead of myself, like, you know, thinking about flying again. Um, probably not until we see spaceflight becoming much more routine. Um, you know, let's just say totally hypothetically, I win this seat and then a year later, there's a similar, you know, contest based um, spaceflight. I, I almost certainly wouldn't enter. I'd want this to be a sort of one off thing for now. And then maybe by the time I'm much older, go back, you know, kind of, kind of have that, have that risky experience, get it done with, uh, get back, be safe. Um, and then, you know, live a little before I take that risk again. Cool. Um, well, that's all the questions I've got for you today. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for coming on. Awesome. Here. Um, yeah. I, thanks for your time, man. I, I wish you luck on your entry. Thanks. It was, it was great talking to you. It's, it's cool to see, uh, another fellow young person so interested in space. So, so keep it up. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. Awesome. Awesome, man. Bye. Sweet. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Coming up, we have one more interview with an inspiration for Hopeful. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.